to these live events right now. We love, we're trying to do the best we can with networking. Um, feel free to reach out to people. You can private chat them or you can uh, chat to the whole group. And then make sure you're connecting with everybody on LinkedIn. So as you're dropping in your LinkedIn URL, uh, make sure it's clickable so that we can all connect to each other. The best way to do that is to open up a, your browser and go to your LinkedIn profile. Just click on your picture. And when you click on your picture, the profile URL will come in the top of your search bar. Just copy that and paste it right into the chat. And then we can connect with each other. All right, if you are not on video, we would love to see your beautiful faces on video. So um, just unmute, unmute the video and we can see you that way as well. Uh, Lisa, thank you. That's a great example of what we're looking for from everyone for the chat. So you could do that, we would love that. Um, we will not be sending out the PowerPoint um, today. Many people ask for that. We're blogging about this event and it will be posted as a webinar and on our website. So all of the links that we talk about today that'll be dropped into the chat will also be in that blog that we have later. All right, Sheila, do you wanna take over and talk about some of the tech stuff? Sure, hey, good morning, this is Sheila Colum. I'm super happy to be here with you today. Um, I wish Facebook would cooperate, but it's still kind of spinning. So we, we won't be Facebook living today, but it will be recorded and posted on our website afterwards. So if anyone misses it or was running late, they can still catch the content. Um, this isn't until the very end, but when you do see polling windows uh, pop up at the very end, if you just answer the question, the window will go away from your screen and you'll be able to see the slides. Uh, Jessica already covered the chat button. I did want to mention display. So each of you have the ability to control how the Zoom session looks on your device. And in a minute, I'm going to stop screen sharing because Travis is going to just speak to you without slides. So when you're when we're doing that, you might um, play with the way the videos are uh, displayed. I like to see the person who's speaking bigger. And so you can toggle between speaker view and gallery view. Um, so keep that in mind. If anyone is in need of closed captioning, just go ahead and message me in the chat and I will get that set up for you. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, two things. One is, um, we piloted a coaching event last week and uh, some of you were part of that. And I wanna thank you again for being willing to experiment with us. Um, the thing is the Zoom platform and all the other platforms that we can afford aren't quite caught up with what we want to do. Um, so there are breakout rooms available, but we're, I'm still working through how to manage that. But I'm, I'm going to again um, do another pilot with another small group of people. So if you're here today, if you've registered for this event today or any event in the last month or so, you'll get an invitation to a coaching event. And what that is, is instead of this format, instead of formal presentations, it is um, just a, a Zoom where we'll all show up and I'll have breakout rooms for our coaches because we have amazing LinkedIn coaches, career coaches, resume writers, um, and financial coaches that want to help you, but we've been struggling with how to provide that virtually. So just to let you know, if you see an invitation to an event, that's kind of what it's, what it is. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. And then I wanted to share something I'm so excited about. M many of you might know another one of our um, keynote speakers. Well, actually she's on this previous slide. Another one of our keynote speakers, Bridget McGowan is an author and she authored a book this year um, called A Collective Breath, a series of uh, stories, excuse me, of being Black in America and visions of change. And I just got my copy last week, and, or last night, hello, last night I just got this and I opened it up and Travis Hardin, our featured speaker today, has his story in this book. So I cannot wait to read this and um, just want to say thanks for doing that. That's awesome. So cool. Um, well, we are super excited to have Travis here today. Uh, Sheila, are the slides moving? Because I still see the first slide. So see if you can move the slides. But we are going to have Travis Hardin today talk, how do I effectively lead during a crisis? And then we have some hiring companies today, Community Medical Services, Rao, Rao? <laughs> Katie, I'm gonna mess it up. Rao, Rao North America, and it's German. So uh, <laughs> Katie, you can go and try that. Um, and then Abby is here with Staffing Symphony and Wealthway, Jason Weissman. So we have a great lineup for you today. 
And um, what I would like to do is introduce Travis Harden. He is, uh, he's just been a great supporter of Career Connectors and has brought some really, really encouraging messages to us. And today he is going to talk to you. He is a native of the great state of Tennessee. He received his Bachelor of Arts degree from uh, Aquinas College, which is in Grand Rapids in 99. And as a John Maxwell certified speaker and trainer, he is equipped in aiding your personal and professional growth through study and practical application of proven leadership methods. And for more than 20 years, Travis has given inspirational speeches for purposeful living, specifically on production, capacity, personal and pro professional growth, overcoming disciplinary challenges and diversity and inclusion. His self-reflective transparency and speeches and workshops has provided him with opportunities to speak around the growth. All of us can grow, these are his words, and increase our positive influence on this generation and those around us beyond our wildest expectations. I challenge you to a new season of growth. It begins with your passion to reach new levels. Please help me welcome our good friend, Travis Harden. Virtual clap. <laughs> hey, top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning. Good afternoon, depending on where you are. I appreciate the welcome, Jessica. Sheila, I appreciate that plug for a collective breath. That book is amazing. You will enjoy it on all accounts that were given for that book. For those of you who are here today, right now, this moment, in the chat, if you're looking to grow, if you're looking to become better, if you're looking to ascend to higher heights, just put the number one in the chat box. Just, just put the number one. If, you, if you're looking to become better, bigger, faster, stronger, if you're looking to grow, just put, put the number one in the chat box. Okay, okay. I, I wanted to make sure I had the right crowd. I wanted to make sure I was speaking to the right crowd because you could have put zero or two and, and that would have told me this, this is a group that's not looking to grow. Because you're looking to grow, this is the place. Because there's no other place like this, there's no other place anywhere else because you're here, this is the place. There's no other day like right now, there's no other day like today, not yesterday, not tomorrow, because today is the day. I am preparing to celebrate the life of my 97 year old grandmother who passed away this week. People often ask me, Travis, what's the best speech you've ever given? What's, what's the best inspirational talk you've ever given? When is, the, when, is, when is that moment when you knew it was the talk that moved the room or moved the stadium or moved the, and my response is always the one I'm giving right now. It's, it's the best one because for most of us, today has to be better than yesterday. My ceiling, our ceiling, your ceiling today needs to be tomorrow's floor. If your ceiling today is tomorrow's ceiling, hey, stop doing it, stop doing it, stop doing it, whatever it is, medical professional, sales, recruiting, whatever it is, if you're not looking to grow and get better, stop. Today is the day. Today's ceiling is tomorrow's floor. And as I think about, and, and, and all of you can, you can write granny in the chat because that, that's my grandmother. A lot of granny is going to come out today. So you can leave today's session saying, man, that Travis guy, we learned a lot about his 97 year old granny. That, 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 you're going to get a lot of tidbits from granny today. Much of it will be Travis and, 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 and my journey. But I want to start with Granny as I think about the keys and the, the practices that she, she taught me in the, the short 97 years that we had with her. And, and one of the things that I think about when I think of Granny is people often get books. Sheila just showed a collective breath. It's a nice design on the front cover. I, I think back to college 
and and all the books that I have are 43 years I've been on this earth. And all of them have a nice cover. They have a nice table of contents. They have a lot of information. But the one that Granny gave me in 1999, it had three staples. It had seven blank white sheets of paper. And she said, this is your book. And I'm thinking to myself as a college senior, what in the world is this? I simply wrote at the top of the first blank page, I want to make a difference. See, desire is the seed to every great accomplishment. No great accomplishment, no great accomplishment. I don't care who you are has ever happened without someone putting on their first blank page that they want to make their life count. They want to do something bigger, better, stronger. They want to make a difference. And if desire is the seed of every great accomplishment, consistency is the fruit of that seed. So we have desire and consistency are the keys to your journey. That, that, that's what granny, that, that's what granny taught me. That, that's, that's what I learned from, from granny. That's what I learned from a wise young lady who had nothing but an elementary education, never went on to middle school, never finished high school, never attempted college, but she taught so many valuable lessons about what it takes to make it. And and that's where we are today. How do we lead? How do we effectively lead through a crisis? How, How do I effectively job search or career search during a crisis? How, how do I do that desire? and consistency. Desire gets you going. Consistency is what makes you better. You're never good your first time. Repeat after me, even on mute. You're never good your first time. So many people get upset at themselves. They kick themselves in the rear end. They throw themselves on the floor. They throw things around. They throw lamps. They throw pillows. They throw everything. They throw irons. They throw dish towels, washcloths, you name it. They throw it because they didn't succeed the first time. Newsflash. You're you're never good your first time, but you do want to be good at some time. At some time, you want to be good. The greatest way that we can progress, you and me, we together, is to move forward. And with that movement comes clarity. And and the magic of advanced attraction, uh, when I know who I am and I know what I want, I begin to attract people and resources that will add value to who I am and to what I want. I I think about uh, Coach Bo back in my college days and and the managers that I had uh, playing baseball many years after I had left college and and talking about leading through a crisis. Uh, Many people talk about a journey to success and, and I, had time to reflect on a journey to success. And the truth of the matter is, there is a success journey. There is no real journey to success. There is a success journey. You're successful. You are successful when you take your first step. We confuse recognition of success with success, two totally different things, two totally different things. 
there is the recognition of success and and there is success they're not the same they are not the same a perfect example of this is is let, let's look at graduation uh, we're in covid-19 times and this past spring we we saw graduates and families were were perturbed at not being able to celebrate what was called the success of those who had put in work and and finished their degrees whether it be bachelors their whether it be masters postgraduate doctorate that that's not a success that's called the success journey that's the recognition of success everyone is celebrating success no 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 that's not success this is the recognition of success looking back to the first day that you enrolled in college or enrolled in the program or the first day you 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 filled out the application or the first day you went to apply for that career that you're looking for in sales recruiting medical profession whatever that work that that met that professional field is that is a success you're already a success in the beginning no one notices but in the end everyone recognizes and and that's the difference i want you to understand as we as we walk through this today understand the difference between the recognition of success and success the minute you put yourself out there to become bigger better stronger everyone here today is a success because you're here you took a step forward and and listening to some crazy guy Travis talk about granny you're a success you're a success whatever it is you're looking to do you're a success i have a couple of keys here that i'm going to share dealing with hey, my Travis can i yeah. interrupt you real quick yep um your video has been frozen so i wonder if you we can hear you but if you could turn your video off and then try to turn it back on, just kind of mute it and then come, yep, and see if it, that will trigger it to come back in. See, Sheila's trying to kick me out. See, see how you <laughs> uh, We do also, everyone, it, you, we can still hear him, but we do have closed captioning live. So it's, um, if his video doesn't come back and you're having any trouble, um, we do have, it's on the bottom screen. It says closed captioning and you can view the, the transcript as it's happening there. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay, we don't have your video, but we can hear you, Travis. So you can go ahead. Okay, okay. I saw that, but I, I didn't want to derail anything. So I wanted to keep going, Jess. I appreciate you yep. for, for mentioning it. But in this journey, as we go, even with technical difficulties, technical challenges, we're just in a technical challenge right now, the last seven months. It's just a, it's just a small glimpse of what's going to come. We have to go through the tough times in order to enjoy the great times. I do believe bigger and better is on the other side of everything that we're going through. And, and I'll share these steps as, as it relates to our journey together. Some of this is mine, some of it is yours. Your journey will have and have had totally different experiences. But if we're going to make a difference, these are key steps to take as you pursue that career in the medical profession, recruiting, sales, doesn't matter what it is. I, I've seen a lot of things in the chat that, that you're here for a specific reason and you, you want to be in the Phoenix community or another community, wherever you are, Th these are key steps. And I talked about that blank seven page, three staples book that granny gave me in 1999. It, it was simple. I was a college graduate with, with no long-term plans, no, nothing sophisticated. I just wanted to add value. And if you and I are going to effectively lead through a crisis, we're going to have to add value everywhere we go. Everywhere. 
everywhere, the grocery store, or whether or you're in the local store, a huge supermarket, the mall. It, look, if you are going to the mall and to the store, be sure you have your mask on, have your mask on. Wherever you go, add value, add value. And, and, and then when I started adding value, I, 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 I simply wanted to add value to more people. The, the three or four people that I that would listen to me at that time, two or three, I would have to tie down. And, and, and there was one that would just be there and they'd fall asleep. But, but I was a college senior and I just wanted to add value. So then I got to the point where I wanted to add more value. I wanted to add value to more people. I added value to, to what was fun. So I, I wondered what would it be like to add value to a few more? I wanted to expand. What, what I was, I was a horrible shepherd because I did not want to hang around the same sheep all the time. It, I, I, was, I was worried about expanding. It was good, but I wanted to expand. I went from a shepherd to a rancher. I, I was into sheep. I was just into more sheep. I was into more people. I wanted more people to add value to. I wanted to speak to many people. I didn't want to just speak to three or four, although, my, I, hey, I'm happy to speak to three or four, but I wanted to expand. I also wanted to equip people in order to multiply. I wanted to train others in order to multiply. If you can mentor others, you understand who you are and what it is you want. I'll say that again. If you can mentor others, you understand who you are and what it is you want. There's, there's a belief that I always say consistency compounds. We have to get up every day. I talked about it earlier. Today's ceiling is, tomorrow fl is tomorrow's floor. Consistency compounds. No one, no one, I don't care who you are, in the history of the success journey, no one has ever quit their way to the top. No, 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 no. They work their way. They grind their way. They pursue reaching the top, growing daily. Consistency compounds. Key steps. Here's, here's another step. Your first step is your most important step. Your first step is your most important step. No race, not a marathon, not a sprint, whether it's the 100, the 200, the 60, when it's indoor during the winter, no race has ever been run that was not first started. Good intentions need to become good actions. Many of you are here this morning, this afternoon, and you're saying, well, well geez, man, career connectors, I, I, you know, I, I just want to check out and see who they are, what they're about. Hey, that, that's the first step. That's good intentions. Good actions is following up with, with those who are going to present job opportunities, career opportunities, immediately following my session. It's following up. The, the, now, now the good intentions have become good actions. Your first step is the most important step. Your next step will not be obvious until you take the present step. One of the challenges of the journey is we want to know five steps ahead. Everyone wants to know, well, you know, down the road when I get here, I need to make a left or I need to go right. Do I need to pursue that promotion? Do I need to, no, no. Hey, take the present step first. Remember, at, at the top of this, we started with today is the day. Not, not yesterday, not tomorrow, today, right now. Right now, it, today is the day because it's never been here before. We've never seen this day before. Today is the day. Your next step will not be obvious until you take the present step. After you take that present step, it's growth. Growth enables you to keep going expanding yourself, growing yourself. Inward growth allows you to take those steps. Growth expands your capacity. We, I think we get in trouble 
because we think that we have to set goals. I, I like to call it setting growth. You, you want to set yourself up for growth every single day. When, when you hit goals, you get to where you're going and, and you sort of stop, you fizzle out. The, the dream is now reality and then what? No, you want to keep going. You don't go up to the top, you grow up to the top. When you grow to the next level, it is a natural fit as if you've already been there before. When you grow into something, it, 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 it's like you've, you've been there. It, it'd be a shame if, if you wore a size seven, regardless if you're in men or women, I'm working with a size seven. So ladies, you're a size seven. Guys, let's say a size 10. I, I'm not gonna give a man a size seven on, on here this morning. That, that'd be a, 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 just a shame. So, so we're gonna give the guys a size 10. It'd be a shame if, if you're a size seven in women and you try to wear a size 14. It'd be a shame. You you drown. You drown. You you have to grow into that. Next, you go into a size seven and a half or a size eight, and, and you work your way up to a fourteen. For men, size ten. It, it'd be a shame if you put on a size fifteen shoe, or or let's say like a Shaquille O'Neal, like a size twenty-two. You you you're a size ten. You're not a twenty-two. You have to grow into that. You can't just put it on. You'll fumble all over this, all over yourself. You'll fall everywhere. You'll stumble. You 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 look silly. You will look silly. You don't go up to the top. You grow up to the top. Next is doing well at one step sets you up to do well at the next step. Uh, everyone knows Steve Martin. And, and Steve Martin says no one ever wants to hear his advice on acting. Steve Martin, great actor for many years. Uh, I, I found that very, very strange when he said that people, people really don't want to hear his advice on acting. Why is that? Because everyone wants to hear about agents and the shortcuts. And Steve Martin simply says, if you want to learn about acting, you want to be so good today that people would not, will not ignore you. And that's where you are today. We're, we're in this together. You're, you're going to get better. You're going to make it. It, it. it looks dark, but hey, just like Steve says, just, just like Steve Martin says, right? Hey, be so good today that people will not, will not ignore you. I, I think back, I've spoken, oh gosh, how many times, Jess, Sheila, I, I I don't know, maybe a half dozen times, seven, eight times for career con connectors. And, and every time I have probably as much, if not more value added to me than I could ever add to career connectors. Be because I, 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 hey, I want to be so good today that those of you who are listening, watching, or well, you're not watching, but you're listening, that, that you will not ignore this. You will not ignore this. You, you'll come back and you'll, you'll reflect. You'll, you'll look at the notes that you've written down and you'll say, you know what? That granny was something else. That 97 year old lady from Tennessee, she was something else. She, she, she imparted some, some wisdom into that young Travis kid. Well, I'm probably the oldest one here. So I, I, I still consider myself a kid, but yeah, I, I'm probably the oldest one on here this morning, this afternoon. So, so yeah, I, I, I call myself a kid, but to those of you, you you'll say, you'll say, wow, I, I can do that. I, these are things that I can do. Granny was right. Steve Martin was right. When people come up to you and they ask you, how do you do it? People say all the time, Travis, man, I want to do what you do. You, you make it look easy. Jessica just told you, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I work hard at this. This is not, if it looks easy, that's good, but it's not easy. There are, there are many late nights, many tears, a lot of sweat that goes into this. I, I didn't just wake up and poof, begin speaking and adding value to small crowds, large crowds. No, 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 no. I had to work at being so good today 
that people would not ignore me. Another step, success is a series of steps. It's not one giant leap. It's not one giant leap. You have to have stored work before you show up. And, 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 and this is simply by saying, you can't just show up on a job, whether you're an engineer, medical professional, recruiter, sales, uh, it, it, a professional athlete. You can't just show up and get the job done. There has to be some residuals of you doing this many months, many years prior to you doing it in order to do it at a level that considers you to be one of the best. You can't, you can't just show up. You have to have stored up your work. And that's one of our challenges. Everyone wants to get, a, get the degree, get into a career, and make $95,000 right away. It doesn't happen. The first, gosh, the first 10 years of me just speaking, just speaking, not talking about career professionally, uh, just speaking, I, I didn't make, but probably around 25,000 in the first 10 years. It wasn't more than 25,000, that's 10 years. I had to store up 80% of my speaking engagements for free because I just wanted to add value. I just wanted to get out there. I just wanted to get out there. You have to just get out there. You have to network. We talked about putting your LinkedIn information in the chat, put it in there, put it in there. What, what did we say? What did we say in step one? Your first step is your most important step. Good intentions need to become good actions. Put your information in the chat. Good intentions, hey, I'm going to put mine in there and then you start sidebarring, you start multitasking and you never put it in there. Someone here today is going to see your information and that's going to start the ball rolling because you put out there what it is you want to do. It'll never happen if you don't say it, if you don't take actions. So that first step was your most important step. The second step, your next step will not be obvious until you take the present step. Step number three, growth enables you to keep going. Step number four, doing well at one step sets you up to do well at the next step. That's where we talked about Steve Martin. Step number five, success is a series of steps, not one giant leap. And that's where we just talked about you have to have the stored work before you show up. Too many of us want to show up. We want to show and tell, but we haven't stored any work. Step number six. Step number six, this is one of my favorite steps. Step number six, this is one of my favorite steps. Put a star next to this one. Put a star next to it. Each step should be your favorite step. I, I just said it earlier. Uh, people always ask Travis, what, 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 what would you categorize as your most profound speech or your most uh, thought provoking talk or, or conversation? It's, it's the one that I'm doing right now. It, it's career connectors right here this Wednesday morning, this Wednesday afternoon, October 21, 2020. This is my favorite step. So many times we often get destination disease. It, it, it's called destination disease. People ask, was I happy when I got to speak in front of 100,000 plus people? I always say I was overjoyed to speak in front of five people, six people, three people. I'm, I'm overjoyed when I get a chance to speak to a crowd of three or four. Today, I practice and I rehearse and I plan for a small group just as I do a large group. It's all a part of the journey. Each step should be your favorite step. I don't care if you're trying to get into a multi 
million, billion dollar corporation, multi-billion dollar industry, or just a mom and pop situation. You have to be in the mindset that this is your favorite step and you're going to give it your all. You're going to give it your best. Don't slack because, oh man, this is just a, a $150,000 a year position uh, a company that I'm trying for. It, it, it's not the, the $35 billion company. It's just a, a couple hundred thousand dollars is, is what they generate in revenue each year. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Go with the same tenacity. Go with the same uh, vigor. Go with the same passion. Each step should be your favorite step. Don't get stuck with that destination disease. Step number seven. You don't step your way to success. Each step well done is success. Remember we talked about earlier, the difference between recognition of success and success. The minute you start moving, you're a success. The minute you start listening, the minute you start reading, the minute you start researching, you're a success. The minute you apply, you're a success. Don't get caught thinking that you're not a success because you haven't finished. You're a success because you're stepping your way to success because each step well done is success. Do each step to the best of your ability. You're not going to do it like me. And guess what? I'm not going to do it like you. Each step well done is success. Number eight, step number eight. Failure and success should never be separated. You heard that right. Failure and success should never be separated. You, you, you're looking for that, 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 that career that maybe for the last six years, you, you haven't been able to crack the door open to it. You, you've been application after application, submittal after submittal, you have not found the opening. Guess what? Failure and success should never be separated. There is not a person in the world who has reached any level of success without failure. If you want to be successful during this journey, you will fail. The acronym for fail, F-A-I-L, here it is, here it is. Here it is. You can tweet it. You can, you can put it in the chat however you want to do it. F-A-I-L. First attempt in learning. That's what, that's what, that's what, that's what it is. That we said it earlier. You'll never be good on your first try because this is your first attempt in learning. You're going to fail. Just don't become a, a professional failer. Don't, don't, that, that's my own made up word, failer, F-A-L-E-R. Not a failure, a failer. Just don't become a professional failure. You're going to fail. It's your first attempt in learning. But then you, you learn from, from the stumbling block you had today. And tomorrow you grow. And then you grow the next day. Now, if you're, if you're doing the same things, remember today's ceiling is tomorrow's floor. If you're doing the same thing tomorrow that you did today, you'll be a professional failure. That's called uphill thinking with downhill actions. You have downhill motivation. You want everything easy. It's not going to be easy. Uphill vision requires uphill work. The difference between a good leader or an effective leader in the midst of a crisis and a great leader in the midst of a crisis is one who learns to anticipate rather than react. Uh, that, that, that's... I, I talk about this often. I, I think about a conversation I, I had and I, I listened to Wayne Gretzky share. Uh, Wayne Gretzky, for many of you, uh, Wayne Gretzky, by most accounts, is considered one of the best National Hockey League players to ever grace the ice. Uh, many people from other parts of the country, they would say uh, other players, but, but many would say Wayne Gretzky's right up there. Wayne Gretzky says, most players 
skate to where the puck is. I skated to where the puck was going. Anticipate your next move. Don't react on what happens. And you can anticipate. You, you, you're already in that, that, that anticipation stage because you're here. You're, just, you're here with Jessica, Sheila, myself, Jason, Katie. You, you're here with all of us. You're here because you're anticipating and you're not reacting. You can, th this, is a, this is a gold nugget. This is a platinum nugget. The dream is free, but the journey is not. The dream is free, but the journey is not. Th this, this is just part of the journey. COVID-19, social unrest, financial disasters, it's all a part of the journey. Yes, we've all dreamed about, you, you've had dreams about being at a certain place. Remember, thinking five steps ahead. We talked about that earlier. You, you, you were five steps ahead, and yet you're looking at yourself and you're saying, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And I'm here to tell you today, yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're right where you're supposed to be. The dream is free, but the journey is not. Another way of looking at this is, is the dream is absolutely free, but the hustle is sold separately. Ooh, 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 that's good. That's good. That's good. Man, I have to write that one down. I have to write that one down. I, that, that, uh, man, I, I'm going to tweet that one myself. The dream is absolutely free, but the hustle is sold separately. Your career, uh, I, I, I think, as I wind this down, your career, whether it's right now or next week, next month, next year, your career, whatever step you're in, your career is what you're paid for. Your calling is what you are made for. And your calling is to make a difference in the lives of everyone around you. Some people may not get it. Everyone here this morning, regardless if you can see me or not, you can hear my voice. I, I'm, I'm not, look, I get paid for my career, but I was made for this calling. Your career is what you're paid for. Your calling is what you're made for. And if you're made to, to be in recruiting, sales, uh, whatever that is, you'll get there because you're gonna take the steps that are necessary to make a difference. Warren Buffett said the most important skill he could teach anyone in life to be successful is communication. And boy, is this an opportunity for us to learn how to communicate. Even, even in the midst of, of technology collapses, uh, Jessica coming on, Travis, hey, you froze, you, you, something's happening. Zoom, I don't know what it is, but we can hear you. Hey, I, you can't see me, but we can still communicate. We can still communicate. I'm not going to allow this first attempt in learning and doing a Zoom call with no, with no picture. Uh, this is a first. Hey, first attempt in learning. This, this is a fail, first attempt in learning but you're gonna be just fine. Failure and success, again, should not be separated. Something I read, uh, you, can, you can write this down. I'll share it with Jessica as we leave. Something that I read every day, uh, Granny shared this many, 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 many years ago. And as we prepare to celebrate the life of a 97 year old with an elementary education who shared so much of her life with so many and added value to hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people. How did she do that? Because she poured into young people like me and now I get to take those lessons and spread them around the world. 
it's 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 called just for today something that i read every single day and i want to share it with you here at career connectors just for today i will choose and display the right attitude just for today i will determine and act on important priorities. Just for today, Jessica, just for today, Sheila, just, just for today, just for today, I will follow healthy guidelines. Just for today, I will communicate and care for my family, not tomorrow. I'm not worried about yesterday, today, today, just for today, I will communicate and care for my family. Nick, Lori, I, I, it, hey, you're, you're paying attention. Just for today, I will practice and develop good thinking. Just for today, just for today, I will make and keep proper commitments. Just for today, I will earn and properly manage finances. Just for today, I will deepen and live out my faith. Just for today, I will initiate and invest in solid relationships. Just for today, I will model generosity. I'm not going to model generosity. I'm not worried about tomorrow. For today, I'm going to do it. Just for today. Just for today, I will embrace and practice good values. Just for today, I will seek and experience improvement. Just for today, I will act on these decisions and practice these disciplines today. And then one day, I will see the compounding results of many days lived well. That's all of my time. I appreciate your time. And I promise you, as long as we both stay connected to Career Connectors, we'll see each other at another time. Thank you so much, Travis. Uh, we appreciate you being here. If anyone has any questions for Travis, we do have a couple more minutes if you wanna drop a question in. Travis, I have one specific question I'd like you to address. You gave us a ton of great encouraging information today. Um, I was taking notes like crazy over here. Um, if you, uh, you know, most of the people on the line today are going through a difficult career transition in some capacity. Of everything you told us today, what do you, would you say would be the most important piece or um, for um, piece of information for them as they're moving forward in their career search right now? Connect, connect. You have to be a connector. Uh, so many people, uh, they, they, they communicate, Jessica, but we have to focus on connecting with people. It, it's one thing to come on to career connectors and communicate that I want a new career or I want to level up my career. The key is connecting. People, people will, will forget what you said. People will forget how you said it, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And so we have to connect with people in order to ascend to greater levels, higher heights, whatever it is you want to do, connect with people. That, that's the key that I take every day. Uh, just for today, I'm going to, to connect with more people. Yeah, I love that word, obviously. <laughs> so Career Connectors is our thing. Right. It's all about connecting. And so uh, you know, as you were kind of challenging us and what we're doing, I always say whatever you can do, especially while in career transition, to make five really good connections every day and get outside of your comfort zone and 
uh, you know, message somebody on this call, pick up the phone and call a friend, send a text message to somebody that can just talk to you about your career transition and talk to you about what opportunities might be out there. Um, I always encourage five really good connections at every time, every day, if you can. Thank you, Travis. We greatly appreciate you being here today. Thank you for an awesome presentation. You guys feel free to reach out to Travis at any time. Um, we will make sure uh, his contact information is um, up front and in front of you guys um, in our blog and as we get the message out uh, for this talk today. So I know you have to drop off, Travis. So any parting words before you head out? Love to the best of your ability because tomorrow is not promised. Do it today. Do it today. That's it. Awesome. All right. If you are online, we do a virtual clap with our hands in the air. Woo! So virtual clap, everyone. Thank you, Travis. We really appreciate you today and all of your support to Career Connectors and our entire community of people. Thank you again. All right, we are now going to jump over to our hiring companies and Megan is up first. So Megan Kennedy is one of the recruiters for Community Medical Services. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Community Medical Services, they are a CARF accredited substance use disorder treatment program providing outpatient medication assisted treatment via medication, counseling and community based services. They have been serving patients since 1983 and are and still headquartered here in Scottsdale, Arizona with over 50 clinics in nine states. And Megan is thrilled to be here today to meet all of you and to talk about their opportunities. So welcome, Megan. Hi, Jessica. Thank you for that introduction. And thank you, everyone at Career Connectors, for inviting us here today. I'm excited to share with you a little bit more about the opportunities with community medical services. We are really experiencing a lot of growth at this time. Uh, to be perfectly frank with you, my position wasn't even available last year, uh, but it is now just because we've honestly doubled in size over the last couple of years. So we really are experiencing a lot of growth at this time. Um, for those that are not familiar with community medical services, we are a CARF accredited substance use disorder treatment program. So we do provide outpatient services for individuals that are suffering from opiate use disorder. Um, in addition to the technical skills that we're looking for, we're very focused on making sure that we are hiring individuals that do match with our mission, vision, and values. Um, that's something that is very important to us as we continue to make hiring decisions. So we are really dedicated to a culture of excellence that supports our employees' motivation, passion, and morale. We are striving to eliminate the consequences of substance use and to help our patients navigate the continuum of care without discrimination and stigma that they may face as a result of their opiate use disorder and use of medication-assisted treatment. We believe in providing an environment that facilitates individual and professional goals as well as for career growth. And I know I just shared with you, you know, my position wasn't even created last year, um, but we have created several new positions because of that growth. I have updated uh, the next slide to kind of go over some of the hot jobs, if you will, that we are currently hiring for. So right now we do have a variety of positions. We are really looking for a lot of front desk talent, um, both in the East Valley and in the West Valley. Our schedules are pretty specific, although we can offer a variety of schedules, as you see, from 12 to 8 or 4.30 to 12. And that's just because we know that's when we're gonna have an influx of patients, so we need the support there. Um, so for a lot of people, that 4.30 a.m. to 12.30 can really be a great schedule. It allows you to have the rest of your afternoon to go do other things. In addition, you know, if you do need to report to the clinic, there is no traffic at 4.30 in the morning. Um, so it is a very easy commute. Um, if anyone does have any questions on the positions that are posted on this slide, please feel free to enter it in the chat. Um, with our front desk, it's going to be anywhere from $15 to $17 an hour, depending on experience. We do have a shift differential right now that we're paying in response to COVID-19. Um, so all administrative operators will be eligible for an additional $1.50 an hour during this time. And then we have a bilingual shift differential that has no sunset on it. We will pay you $0.50 cents an hour in addition if you are proficient in any language. And then we have another slide. 
Um, so right now it's actually pretty exciting. We do have a clinic manager position available. It is for kind of our jewel of the East Valley. It's our very large clinic. Um, it is gonna be both an intake and a maintenance center. So we really look, are looking for someone very talented with a history in healthcare management that knows how to do process improvement to make sure that we are getting our patients in and out of the clinic as soon as possible. And that's really just to make sure that we're making the intake process easy. Um, you know, these individuals are gonna be in recovery. So we wanna make sure that we're able to inspire them to stay and get the necessary paperwork done and make a solid treatment plan. Um, so we're really looking for someone that could bring a lot of process improvement, a lot of fresh ideas, just to make sure that we are able to get our patients the best care possible. Additionally, we are looking for a few substance use counselors in both the West Valley and the East Valley. Again, it is gonna be those early mornings, um, but that schedule I've heard is actually really great. You know, There is no traffic on the road. And again, you have the rest of your day to do um, what you want when there's less people at the stores. And then of course we do have an insurance verification specialist. This is gonna be a remote role. So I did wanna bring this to your attention. Um, this is something that will be done out of corporate and this is a newly created role that is grant funded. So it's very exciting. There is a lot of new opportunities that are constantly being created. And I do apologize. I think my pet is gonna grace my screen. <laughs> I see them eyeing my computer. Um, but also in response to COVID-19, individuals that do have the ability to work remote have been able to work remote since March. They have been offering us a $50 stipend just because they do recognize that we are using our cell phone and our computers for work-related issues, um, not as much personal. And then of course, individuals that are working in the clinics have been paying or have been paid a COVID shift differential since March. Um, so that's a few of the things that we have been doing to implement um, new changes into our clinics, in addition to installing clear plastic barriers wherever possible, doing temperature checks at the front door, limiting the amount of visuals that are allowed in the clinic at any given time, um, and also having client navigators that are really enforcing that everyone is wearing that mask. All right, so how to apply for jobs. And please let me know if you do have any questions on this, uh, because again, I want to make sure that everyone really can understand where they can see our opportunities and what is the best way to apply. Uh, so with community medical services, I am the direct point of contact, the gatekeeper, if you will, for opportunities that are going to be in Arizona and Texas. It is my job as kind of the hiring coordinator for both the candidates and the clinic managers to properly screen candidates and set them up with a final virtual interview. So to find our jobs, it is on our company website and our company website is just our company name so communitymedicalservices.org. On the right-hand side of the website, you will see an about section. And there's a lot of great things under that about section, including uh, CMS in the news that I do encourage you to check out. It really gives you a look at a lot of inspiring things that we've been doing. Um, but under CMS in the news, there is career opportunities and they are gonna be sorted by location. Um, so that's very helpful. You know, We have a little bit over 23 clinics in Phoenix alone. Um, so it really helps to show you what area of Phoenix exactly we're hiring for um, and what that job responsibilities are going to be. So if anyone has any questions on that, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, and, you know, we are a growing company. So if you're ever just curious if something's coming up in the pipeline or if maybe we're opening a clinic more in the area that you are looking to live or relocate, my email com contact information is right in the slide as well. Uh, feel free to reach out to me or send me a message on LinkedIn. I did include my contact information earlier in the chat. Um, and just start a conversation with me. I'm happy to let you know kind of where we're growing, where we're going, and just see if it's something that could be a fit. And awesome. then Thank you so much, Megan. I am um, excited to have you guys here. We, uh, my, my husband, many, of, many people on the line actually know Mark Pierce. He's my husband. Um, he transitioned from the recruiting world and recently got his... Um, became a counselor and got, and so he has started working for CMS. And I wanted to say that because his schedule is 4.30 to 12.30. And we thought, no way, how is this gonna happen? But I have to say, he's home by one o'clock and I give him my honey-do list and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was an adjustment, but actually it's been working really well for our family. So if you're considering working, um, talking with CMS or working for them, um, please reach out to Megan. She's available on this chat and she's available um, afterwards as well. So thank you so much, Megan, for being here. We appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. And just really quickly, I did have another slide that kind of went over oh, our yeah. benefits. Um, so. 
I just wanted to make sure that individuals did know that this is a full-time opportunity. After 30 days, after the first date of hire, you will be eligible to enroll in benefits. We do have medical dental vision as well as a 401k. We match up to 4% after you've been with the company for six months, but it's immediately 100% vested. Um, and then of course we have vacation and sick time that do accrue, but immediately upon hire, you are eligible for five personal days that you can use at your discretion. And then we have a lot of unique perks that are geared towards tenured employees. For example, every year you're with the company, you are available for an additional week of vacation. Uh, that does max out on your fifth year. We had to draw the line somewhere, uh, but that still is a really nice perk to have in the behavioral health field. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to move on to Katie um, Olenek, and she is with Rao North America. Uh, she's the HR manager. And she is also a US Army veteran with 20 years experience in HR with the federal government. And she made the jump to manufacturing this year in January as the first employee of Rao North America. So please help me welcome Katie to our event today. Welcome. Hey, thanks, Jessica. And like I said, I'm Katie Olenek. I'm the HR manager for Rao North America. Rao is uh, a very exciting opportunity, a brand one here in the United States, uh, not just in Phoenix. So here we have the Rao Valley. Um, Rao is predominantly its own brand is fruit juices. So this tree represents all the different fruits that we do include in, in all of our fruits. Uh, and, and it's really exciting, although our, um, owner is deciding that here in the desert that might not work so well. So he's thinking about how to change the imaging graphic for here in Arizona. So we are a fruit family in nature since 1919. Branch Joseph Rao uh, came from the embroidery industry but after uh, World War I. He was looking around at industrialization and he was like, uh oh, this isn't going to be good for me. So what can I do? And he did decide to embark on this fruit juice adventure. Originally what he did was um, the local farmers in the area would bring their apples to him and he would press them and make juices, give them the pulp back so they could uh, fertilize their fields with it. Um, as that grew, he started buying fruit from the farmers and then uh, bottling the apple juice and selling it to local restaurants in, in the area. Once pasteurization came forward, we can then send those fruit juices out further and further and through time started adding more options to the menu lineup. Um, and now, uh, Rao in 2019, celebrated its 100 years in business. Jurgen Rao is the fourth generation owner. This is a family business. Um, it is not publicly traded, uh, it is privately owned, and it's one of the biggest fruit juice companies in the world. So in Europe, uh, we do have 17 factories, 11 subsidiaries, and many different partners. Uh, so where you see the Rao, this is all of our Rao owned and operated uh, plants that we have that do a variety of juices. Some plants do only apples, some do a combination. And then here we have Arizona, the first one in the United States, which is really exciting. And the, uh-oh, open, sorry. Oh, geez. So then we do have subsidiaries, which are other um, uh, production facilities that aren't necessarily owned completely or operated completely by Rao but we do have a hand in them. And then we are also a co-packing filling partner for other uh, brands. And you can see this is where we have those operations in Europe and Northern Africa, um, really heavily established in those markets. But here in Arizona, the first one, really exciting. Um, so Rao is also a co-packing partner for numerous beverage uh, beverage brands. And the number one beverage brand that we co-pack for is Red Bull. 
Rao produces about 98% of the Red Bull uh, distributed throughout the world. We did 7 billion cans last year, and we did that in two factories, one in Austria and one in Switzerland. So those two factories uh, primarily produce Red Bull. And the one in Austria is actually from, uh, it's on the original site of the first Rao factory that is still uh, owned by the company. And that original picture is the offices today. Um, this is an opportunity to be with a company from the floor up. Uh, we are looking for people who have that startup mentality, a passion for building a brand, determination for success. Because while we are established in Europe, we are not established here in the United States. So we do need people that are willing to roll up their sleeves, get ready, get dirty, and make wonderful things happen. Right now, we are we're currently recruiting for machine operators, forklift operators, shift leads, maintenance techs, and electrical technicians. Since we are a 24-7 operation, uh, we do have a shift model of 12 hours uh, from 6 to 6 with 4 days on, 3 days off, and then um, 3 days on, 4 days off. Every 28 days, those do shift from day to night, so everyone gets a piece of that pie. We do offer competitive pay, benefits, 401k, and paid time off. Again, since this is a startup, a lot of our other benefits are being settled right now and, and completely agreed on. But if you have any questions about that, you can certainly reach out to me and I can uh, give you more information. Um, and while this job, maybe this job isn't perfect for you, uh, these, these positions, you might know someone who's also uh, looking for a, a position, a company to grow with, and we ask that you please uh, get the word out for everyone since we are brand new. So currently our positions are posted on indeed.com. You can find those positions by searching for around North America or by going directly uh, to that, that site that's listed right there. I will put that in the chat. Although today our positions did start posting on the RAU career page, which is really exciting. We had to get some of the job application things settled for the United States um, because the way they do in Europe is a little different. Uh, so I will put that also in the uh, chat box. But yeah, we're really excited to be here. We're excited to get started. Production is going to start in November where we start making the Red Bull for the West Coast distribution. It's a really fun opportunity and I look forward to hearing from all of you. I was just going to ask, when do you guys start production? So November. Yes. Oh, I have one more slide, I think. Oops. Coming right up. <laughs> and um katie what um how many employees are there right now right now we have 24. okay and then how many are you growing to um for the first push okay so by the end of the year we expect to have 80 employees um and then line two comes february march so we're looking at about having 125 by the end of 2021 we expect to have about one 60 and then by the end of 2022 we're looking at 300 so well welcome we're so glad to have you guys here i know you had one more slide you wanted to talk about yes yeah, so so this is just if you have further information you can contact me um that is the uh the job the job dot us at rao cc is the inbox where um all our recruiters get to take a look um or you could also just email me directly, which I did put in the chat box. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Um, appreciate your time. And hopefully we're able to um, have some great people um, start working with you. Mm -hmm. All right. We are going to move over to Abby Kohut. She is the president of Staffing Symphony, and she's known in the job search world as absolutely Abby because she tells the absolute truth about the job search process. And in the past 25 years, Abby has held corporate recruiting positions in a variety of industries and is responsible for helping 10,000 people get hired. Recently, CNBC published an article naming Abby as a top 10 consultant and recruiter. She is from New Jersey and she has been on a mission to help 1 million job seekers as she drove around the U.S. several times and we've had her out as a keynote but today she has jobs she'd like to talk about so please help me welcome Abby Kohut. Hello everybody. 
Can you all hear me? We can. Awesome. Okay, so hang on a second. There it is. All right, well, thank you for that introduction, Jessica. I've been listening to everything today and what an inspirational speech. Um, he hit me right in the heart, <laughs> so it was great. So um, my name is Abby Kohut and I have been known as Absolutely Abby because I tell the absolute truth. Today, I'm not gonna be telling you all kinds of job search secrets, but I would love to tell them to you in the future. So I'll tell you how I'm gonna be able to do that later. But today I'm really here to tell you about some jobs. So let me switch this. Okay. So just about a week and a half ago, I decided because of COVID-19 to kind of morph my career a little bit. I've been in human resources for 26 years and I decided to join a headhunter network. So this is the complete opposite of what I've been doing for 26 years. So talking about making a leap of faith and, and making mistakes, oh boy. I made so many mistakes since April, I can't even tell you. That's for another webinar. But the truth is that what I decided to do was to join an, a network of headhunters because I felt that that would be another way for me to help to get my goal of helping a million job seekers. So I joined this headhunter network and there are 511 headhunters in this network. And you see on this slide, it says there are 1,366 jobs available today. Now, you know what's kind of cool is I did this slide about three or four days ago, and today there are actually 1,390 or 1,389 jobs available. So when I tell you that the network is growing, we're adding new headhunters every week. So there's like 10 new ones every week being added to the network, which means these, these headhunters are bringing in new jobs. These are the numbers of jobs that were there when I put this slide together the other day. You see there are 29 jobs in Arizona. That's not all in Phoenix, but that's just Arizona. And that's 21 from last week, which means eight new jobs went up in Arizona since I did the check last week. And then there are all these other states that have jobs. There are jobs in every industry, in every state, at every level. And there are remote jobs. So you can see at the bottom, there are 38 remote jobs. And what that means is that you don't have to live in Alaska to work in Alaska. So you can apply for a remote job. Okay. So I wanted to just show you some of the jobs that are available today. And then I'm gonna give you the website at the end, but here are the jobs that are available in Arizona today. There are some commercial plumbing jobs available. There's, there are sales rep jobs that I'm actually recruiting for. If you happen to have laboratory sales, I'm looking for somebody in anywhere in Arizona. Uh, there's a cath lab specialist, a maintenance engineer planner, a field service tech, a tax accountant, a Swiss and CNC um, machinist. I don't know what that is a maintenance manager, a controls engineer, and we're gonna keep going. Let's see what else there is. Uh, okay, a facilities maintenance manager, a tax senior, don't know what that is, an electrical controls, another engineer, a director of emergency services, a director of marketing, that's a biggie. Some of you might be interested in that. We have an occupational therapist, a speech language, speech language pathologist, an IT account executive, a market director, clinical quality improvement, a maintenance mechanic, a registered nurse. I'm only giving you these because I, you don't have to memorize these. I'm gonna tell you what the website is so you can go look them up. But I just wanted to explain that these are available, okay? And there are still 38 remote jobs beyond these. There were 100 plus jobs posted in the last two weeks. Yay. That's why I put the kitty saying yay, because this is going on literally every two weeks. So this is why I'm telling you this is important. 
I also want to tell you that there are 1,389 jobs, but not all of them are going to be available for you to see. There are about 220 of these jobs that are hidden. And that means nobody knows about them except me and the other recruiters in the network, right? So I'm gonna tell you how to deal with that fact that there are 200 and some odd jobs that are hidden that you can't see. I'm gonna explain that to you. So on my website, which I'm gonna give you in a minute, you're gonna go there and it says jobs, right? And it says, what opportunities are you looking for? And you guys know how to fill that in. That's just, you put the name of the job that you're looking for. And if you happen to be, let's say a purchasing agent, I don't want you to just look for purchasing. I want you to also look for buyer and sourcer and sourcing. You gotta look at all of these types of words and put them in. You can do separate searches. You don't have to do them all at the same time or you can put the word or, you can say purchasing or sourcing or buying if you want. But you can do them separately. And then for the location, I want you to try Phoenix and I also want you to try Arizona because you never know how things are listed. Okay, and then, again, I just wanna remind you when you do searches, it's really good to put quotes around words that when you have multiple words in a row, like chief financial officer, and you put quotes around that, that's gonna get the right um, jobs to appear. If you don't put the quotes around it, you're gonna see jobs for chief, jobs for financial and jobs for officer, but you want jobs for chief financial officer. So if you put quotes around them, you'll get better search results. Also, if you abbreviate, you're not gonna get the right results. So don't write MGR for manager, you should write out the word manager. Okay. This is what it looks like when you do the search, you see a bunch of jobs. And then this is the most important thing I'm gonna say all day. About a week and a half ago, I went to a group in Dallas and it was an HR human resources group. And I spoke to them and I announced the website like literally a week and a half ago. And I said to them, right now there are no human resources jobs available in Dallas. So I really want you guys to set up an alert because there could be a job in Dallas tomorrow in HR. It could be, right? It could be tomorrow, it could be next week, it could be next month, it could happen, right? There's 511 recruiters, any of them could post a job in Dallas at any time. I said that, I hung up the phone. Three hours later, one of the recruiters posted an HR job in Dallas. And I had to scramble to try to figure out who was on my webinar so I could reach out to them to tell them to go look to see if the job was relevant for them. And then a week went by and I was able to get about three of them involved in the process. And unfortunately the job got filled, but not with any of them. And the reason that happened is because people didn't set up the alerts. So I'm really telling you how important these alerts are going to be for you. Please, 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 please set up alerts for yourself on any job that you might want in Phoenix or any of the remote jobs. Any of the remote jobs, same story. Here, I'm just reminding you, this red arrow is pointing towards the full remote. So you can just do a search on full remote jobs. And then you might find things that you can do from Phoenix and the job is somewhere else. There are 38 remote jobs up there today and 31 last Tuesday. So this also is growing. Okay, if you go on my site and you do not find a match today, besides setting up alerts, this is a big deal, okay? I want you to email me your resume and I want you to email it to a special address that I created just for you. It's jobs at absolutelyabby.com. When you email me your resume, three things are gonna happen. You're gonna get three documents. One is gonna be my famous cover letter template that you can use forever. Two is I'm gonna give you a webinar and it's gonna be called Winning the Hearts and Minds of Recruiters. And you can listen to it whenever you like. It's a really powerful one and 
it, it's about an hour long or so. And the third thing is I have a COVID-19 job search 28 page resource guide. And I'm gonna give you that. It's gonna all bounce back to you when you email your resume to jobs at absolutelyabby.com. Once I have your resume, what I can do is I can take it and I can go look at the hidden jobs and I can see if your resume matches any of the hidden jobs. I can also look to see if your resume matches any of the non-hidden jobs that you might not have noticed. So realize I'm gonna have a lot of people to do this for. So this isn't gonna take one day. This is gonna be an ongoing thing that I'm gonna be doing is every time I get a new resume, I'm gonna to look to see if I can make a match for you in this database. But I can't do this proactive stuff for you if I don't have your resume. Even if we're connected on LinkedIn, LinkedIn does not matter. So it's nice if you wanna be connected on LinkedIn, we can do that, but I'm not going on LinkedIn to match jobs. I'm going to resumes. So please, please, please send your resume to jobs at absolutelyabby.com. Okay. See what else? This is the website. Yay. It's called staffingsymphony.com. So this is the name of my company that I've had since 2006, but we just redid the website in order to accommodate all of these jobs. So you go to staffingsymphony.com, do a search, see if any of these jobs match up for you. And if they do, apply for them. If you apply for a job on my site, I'm gonna know that you did that. Your resume is gonna actually go to another recruiter. It's not gonna to go to me. It's gonna go directly to that recruiter that posted the job, but I'm gonna see that it happened. And so I'm gonna probably write a note to that recruiter. If I look at your resume and I think that you are a good match, I'm gonna send a note to the recruiter and say, hey, just want you to know that this candidate applied for your job. I wanna make sure that you see it. And I've done that for several people. Now don't, please don't apply for jobs that you're like only 20% qualified for. If you feel that you're 60% or more qualified for a job, apply for it. Don't wait for a 100% job, go for the 60 plus. If you think you're qualified, apply for it. If I think you're qualified, I'll reach out to the recruiter on your behalf and ask them to please take a look at it. Uh, they're gonna take a look at it anyway, but I'm gonna kind of just remind them that they should take a look at it. Okay, so I'm going to be looking out for all of you in a way that I never did before. Up until two weeks ago, all I was doing was trying to help a million job seekers by giving out lots of job search tips. I still do a lot of that, but this is another way that I'm going to be helping a million job seekers get jobs is by actually filling positions. Another thing I want to mention is I am personally recruiting for some 1099 sales positions for people to sell COVID-19 rapid tests. So the tests that take 15 minutes and do not go into your brain cells. Um, it's like a pregnancy test, but for COVID. And so if you're interested in selling these antigen tests, they just came out literally last week. So they're the hottest thing on the market right now. You don't have to have sales experience you don't have to have medical sales experience. You just have to have a strong desire to sell. And if you want to do this, please mention that when you send me your resume to jobs at absolutelyabby.com and I'll get on the phone with you, tell you about it, see if it makes sense. It's a 1099 commission only position. Okay, that is all. Awesome, thank you. You have one more slide. If you wanna click one more, just some key tips for people. Yeah, so this um, is the summary. There you go. This is the road to success. So first, you search for jobs that you're interested in and qualified for and apply for the job if that's the case. Your resume will go to the recruiter who posted that particular job and I will see that your resume was submitted. I will review your resume and if I think you're a good fit for the position, I'll call the recruiter for you and then the recruiter will be in touch with you if they agree that you're a strong candidate. If you guys wanna take a picture of this slide, you might wanna do that. Also, I put in the chat box, the, the website, the email, I put all of it in the chat box for you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Abby. It was great to have you back. 
um, and speaking today. And um, so please feel free to connect with Abby and get your job um, resume into their job database. Looks like a lot of great jobs are coming out every single day. Yes, thank you for the opportunity, guys. Absolutely. See you online. All right, we are going to have Jason come out. So Jason is um, a, one of our partners in one of the things we've been asked a lot, especially during this time of COVID is what are some additional things I can do, additional revenue streams? Um, so maybe having a job, but also looking for some side hustles or some um, business ownership opportunities. So uh, Jason and I had a conversation. I read his, the book that they have. Um, this is not an MLM, this is a, but it is a not, uh, a not traditional job. So. I wanted to share it with you guys because I thought it was a great opportunity. So um, Jason's going to share with us today. He spent two decades in the corporate world in the semiconductor industry, and his business experience has ranged from owning his own consulting firm to purchasing a franchise that he and his wife ran. And then the past 12 years has been spent managing his own agency. He's been recognized for his performance in the top 500, been featured on the cover of Business and Finance Magazine, and is a multiple six-figure earner. He's co-authored a best-selling book called Winning Ways, and he's been married for 26 years. They have two children and is the senior marketing director with Wealth Wave. So will you please help me welcome Jason Wiseman. Hey, Jason. There, I had to unmute, sorry. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Awesome, awesome. Well, listen, I appreciate getting to spend time with everybody here today, and I love Career Connectors. Jessica and I go way back, uh, I think about a decade ago, I met Jessica right about the time she was starting her effort here. And uh, it's been awesome to see what it's blossomed into. And I think it's a great service for folks that are uh, in career transition, uh, which is what I'd like to talk to you about today. So um, obviously, the name of the company is Wealth Wave or the How Money Works Company. And I always like to start with just a, a quick introduction about how I ended up here, because this was not the path that I was on from a career or life perspective. Um, as Jessica said, I had been in the, in the corporate world for almost 20 years, and along about 2007, um, I was at Motorola, and for those of you that have been in the Valley for a while, if you remember, Motorola was one of the premier employers here for decades, decades and decades, and uh, in the, unfortunately and fortunately, at the same time, the time that I spent there, uh, I started in about April of 2000, um, we laid off people every single year. Uh, the first year I was there, Motorola laid off 60,000 people globally, um, which left about 90,000. And then every year that I was there uh, uh, moving forward, uh, we had layoffs every year, every year, every year. And I was fortunate, just, you know, very, very lucky to be in a group that was, uh, was very key to the organization. We provided global support, but I watched even our group uh, not get hit as hard as some of the other uh, areas did in our facility, but we, we whittled that group down from 22 people. Uh, and when I left, I left behind seven. And so I was, I was one of the top 10, you could say, that was left. And so what happened is, um, you know, it was very stressful. Um, it was agonizing. We never knew, uh, you know, it was always around the holidays when the layoffs were coming. And I finally just sort of reached a breaking point. And I said to my, my wife, um, I think I'm going to make a change. Now, I, my idea was to stay within my own industry, which oftentimes that's what people do when they're looking to make a change. Uh, but at the same time, I said to her, if we're ever going to retire, we got to get some help with this financial stuff, because it just seems like our portfolio is not doing what it should do. And I sought out some advice. I called my CPA first, which is oftentimes what people do. And he introduced uh, my wife and I to a gentleman that was with our firm that I'm now with at the time. And so we sat and did a plan. And there was a couple things that was unique about that experience. Because it wasn't the first time we had spoken with somebody in the industry. Um, but it was a different experience. First of all, it was education-based. It was about our goals, our outcome, our timeline, uh, number one. Number two, the, the education piece in terms of uh, not just money that was going to grow, but money, how money was going to be taxed and how we would leverage things for income in retirement. And then the third thing was having an opportunity to invest the way that uh, I say, quote unquote, wealthy people were investing. 
Uh, so th there was a lower bar to entry for that, which uh, of course made a huge difference for my family. And so we're sitting there when we, when we opened our account and I handed him, this was a long time ago, so I was handing him a check to open the account. And when he grabbed a hold of it to take it out of my hand, I held onto it and I said, what does it take to do what you do? And um, I had no idea, by the way, but here's what I did know. I knew that what was done for my family was important, that it was something that would be with us for a long time, that it made a difference. And I just sat there and thought to myself, man, if this made a difference for my family, certainly it would make a difference for families just like mine. And then I began to think of my parents, for example, who uh, were not were the furthest thing from wealthy, but they did a lot of really smart things, never carried debt. I'm talking credit cards. They've, to this day, they've never purchased a new vehicle. Uh, they paid off their home on a very uh, meager wage, I would say, over the years. Uh, so they were super disciplined with what to do within their household. But because they weren't wealthy, nobody ever helped them with their, their savings and investing and retirement. Now, fortunately, my dad, uh, the last 20 so years of his career, he worked at a power plant. And so he has a, a nice pension and they're, they're okay financially, but they could have been in much better shape, maybe retired earlier, so on and so forth, um, and, and probably been ahead a lot sooner in life. And so those kind of thoughts were running through my head. And so we went to lunch, had a conversation, and of course, there was no way I could just up and leave my career as it was um, and, and start a business uh, you know, from scratch. So one of the unique things that I'd like to share with you is we champion the cause of part-time individuals. And I also want to share with you that this was a huge paradigm shift for me because I didn't have any particular skill or background that matched that of what I do today. But because I was able to transition part-time, I was able to pick up those skills and get the training and the education, the licensing, so on and so forth, to be able to develop that. So I just want you to keep your mind open to new ideas and new opportunities, because in today's world, I think that's one of the most important things that people can do. Uh, so let me click on here. So vision and mission, I, I sort of described that to you. We're, we're a force for families. We're a company for the rest of us. You know, the little guy. Our industry, unfortunately, has shifted to uh, focus on very high net worth people. Um, you know, if you don't have $500,000, a million dollars, uh, most institutions are not going to want to service your account. That you're going to go to a phone bank, you're going to go, you're going to get mainstreamed, in other words. And so we, we don't believe in that. We think everybody should get the same level of service regardless of the account size, as much as possible. There are some limitations, but very few. And then as a company, we're really, really big on building people. So our associates, people like myself, we're very big on building their skill set, building their belief system. Um, it's a business lesson like I've never had before. And as Jessica mentioned, we, we owned a franchise and ran a franchise in the past. I had my own consulting firm. This has been one of the best business schools, if you will, um, but with some pay rather than paying for that, that we've ever that I've ever had in, in my life as well. Um, our, our goal as a company, and it's been this way since the day I started here, is we don't think any family should be left behind from a financial perspective. And so what we've really done is we've taken what is typically been a, an industry that sells a product to somebody. And then uh, when they get buyer's remorse or they don't understand something, they come back kind of afterwards and try and educate people on why they did things. And we've put the education piece first. And of course, today, uh, it's, it's never been quite as good as what we have it. Um, during this COVID time, I, I want you to know that because we were about five years ahead of the rest of the industry in terms of technology, education, and so on and so forth, uh, our only pivot during COVID is that we went to this format because all of the tools that we're using today were already here, already in place. The book that Jessica mentioned was published uh, well over a year ago. It's just about a hundred pages, but it's got great, great things that are real practical for people to use and, and put into play in their life. And then the online portion of that was already done prior to the shutdown. So I've been through two recessions with this organization, uh, markets that are on fire, a pandemic, and, and we just continue to grow and expand as a result of our, our focus on families and putting education first. Uh, so if that excites you, uh, we definitely should talk. 
because it's, it's been a great opportunity. And, and as I mentioned, uh, education is the key. And, and this is just kind of a, a snippet of what things look like for us. We've got, we're distributing about 54,000 books a month to the public. We're doing virtual How Money Works classes um, every single week. We did a, a, a live broadcast from Atlanta a few months ago. We had 20,000 people in attendance for that. And th this is just an educational program that we're, we're sharing with the public. Uh, so as you can imagine, there's a pretty good opportunity, sorry, I have an alarm going off in the back, uh, for us to, to go out and educate people and make a big difference in their lives. And the result of that is that we're able to make uh, our associates very successful with our program as well. And you know, as we sit here today, um, just some things that I jotted down in preparation for this, you know, um, the supply and demand in our industry is, is completely out of sync. And what I mean by that is the overall industry is shrinking in terms of headcount. So for every one person that gets a license, there's two people that leave the industry. Uh, we have an aging population of advisors. So, so most advisors are over the age of 55. Uh, in the meantime, we've got a growing population of people, three working generations, the boomers, uh, my generation, I'm the Gen X, and then we have the millennials that are employed today, all looking for solutions that they can own, that they can drive and be in control of. Um, and our model is built in a way that we can train people quickly on a part-time basis to go out and, and make a huge difference in families' lives. And just this morning, I heard that uh, there are six million people, six million people that did not make their mortgage payments in October, six million. Uh, that's a big number. Um, and we're about six months into the pandemic situation. But here's the really sad part. Within two weeks of the shutdown, uh, like the official shutdown that the whole nation experienced, there were 4 million people that were unable to make their mortgage payments. And I empathize with them. But at the same time, I get a little bit fired up that um, with just a tiny little bit of education, that could all have played out completely different for those folks. We don't teach this in schools. We don't learn it in college. We learn it as we go through life. Most of the time we follow a bad example of a parent or an uncle or, or our peer group. And uh, we believe that education is the core. And so we've got a great opportunity for somebody to come in make a big difference, make some pretty good money, even uh, on a part-time basis, maybe transition into a full-time career as time moves forward. And so if you would like to learn more about that, this Friday at noon, you, you see the QR code here, you can just take your phone and uh, take a picture of that, that will get you registered for a webinar that will go into a little bit more detail about our platform and what we do to help people and, and give you a, a, a better idea of what uh, a possible career with us looks like. Um, so Jessica, I, I appreciate the time here as always with Career Connectors and the people that are on here. Um, and let's go make a big difference in the world um, because it, it needs us to do that right now, especially in the, the times that we are in. So thank you so much for that. Absolutely. And Jason, yeah. thank you for all the people that you've helped already um, since we've been working together in the last six months or so. We really appreciate it and um, appreciate you being here today. Yeah. And oh, by the way, if anybody would like a book, um, just email me at jason.wiseman at wealthwave.com that was on the screen there. And we'll, we'll send you the book as well. Great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Here's our yeah. virtual clap. Yay. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Jason. All right. So I want to uh, just close with a couple things today. Um, we are going to launch an evaluation. And if you would like to, it will pop up on your screen. Sheila's getting ready to launch it. It will pop up on your screen. You just answer the question. There'll be four questions, one at a time. Answer the question and it will go away. So it won't be on your screen anymore. Thank you for um, filling that out for us. We, if you have any additional feedback, like companies you'd like to see to speak or um, topics you'd like us to address, please email us at contact at careerconnectors.org with that feedback. All right. So, um, we want to thank our partners. Many of them, some of them are here today as well. And so uh, Wealthwave is obviously one of our partners, but we have a lot of different partners that are hiring or doing things in our community. And so we just are so incredibly grateful to them. We also have put together a website for you guys of resources. This, uh, we launched this in April, right after COVID hit. And so we have verified companies that are hiring on this website. 
And um, the numbers are uh, around 140,000 jobs available in the Phoenix area right now. And many of those companies are listed on that website. We also have some additional resources, both on the job seeker side and the employer side. Uh, but the companies that are on this website, we have verified and they are hiring. And so we've actually talked to them. And so there's um, over 200 listed on this website and those are primarily in the Phoenix area. All right, so we, as we mentioned, we do not send out the PowerPoint, but we do have a volunteer right now recapping this entire event. And so that will be posted on our blog in the next couple days. We also uh, invite you guys to take the DISC assessment. It's a behavioral assessment. I'll tell you a little bit about your work style, your ideal work environment. And so it gives some good insight into your strengths and your communication style as well. And then we actually have this really cool um, photography opportunity. And those photos are available on um, our photo website. And so I'm not sure if we included the photo. Yeah, it's on, coming on another slide. So I'll talk about that in a minute. We also have uh, four different platforms, all four of these different platforms available to engage with us. We use LinkedIn a lot and our companies post on our LinkedIn page as well when they have job opportunities. So join our group on LinkedIn and we would love to engage with you there as well. All right, we have a couple upcoming events. We are moving on our event just for this November 5th event to a Thursday. The reason we're doing that is because that is election week. And so most of us, I think, are probably going to be up late on Tuesday night watching this craziness go down. And so you, uh, we, we are like, we're probably not going to be ready to go Wednesday morning. And so we imagine a lot of people probably aren't going to be feeling great to go on Wednesday morning either. So we just made a one day adjustment to November 5th. And remember something Travis said at the end of his talk, I said, what is your number one um, piece of advice for people going through a career transition? And his was connecting. And so Justin is going, his talk is called Correcting for 2020. Uh, and it's all around the job search process and connecting with people. So uh, sign up for that one. We have Isola, Wealthwave is coming back for that event and Penny Mac is our hiring companies. And then we have something really interesting on November 18th, you guys. It's called Diversity Talks. We do it once a year. These are companies that are have diversity initiatives and that care about diversity in their company culture. And so we have eight companies on a panel to talk about the diversity initiatives they have, the kind of jobs that are hiring, uh, so we are going to do the panel and then we have 12 additional companies that will be speaking for a couple minutes on their uh, opportunities. All of these companies are diversity and equality um, award winning companies. And so we're going to have over 20 companies at this one event. It's diversityaz.org is the specific URL. You can get that from our website as well. Um, but you can go directly to diversityaz.org to see all the companies that are hiring. We have, oh, I don't, I can't, I don't even know who they all are off the top of my head, but I know that State Farm will be there, um, Voya. Uh, there's some really great companies that'll be at that one. And then Wednesday, December 2nd, we do this event twice a year, the Resume Mythbusters panel. We take four resume professionals, experts in their field, the best of the best, to come in and do a panel. And we ask all the hard questions, all the questions you guys are wanting to ask. You can even submit your questions when you register for this event, but we will ask the questions about resume format, applicant tracking systems and how to get through them. So lots of good stuff. Uh, and that's uh, Wednesday, December 2nd. All right, the next slide here is about the headshots. And so get this, when we have live events, we bring in a professional photographer to take your photo and it's free, it's included in the program. Since COVID hit, that is one of the areas we have not been able to provide until we had this awesome photographer, Gordon Murray, Flash Photo, offer to have specific days where you can go in and get your photo taken. 
And so if you need a new headshot, if you need a business portrait uh, for LinkedIn or for other use, go in. There is no cost. If you'd like to give a donation, you are welcome to give a donation to him, but there is no cost. He will get, take the photo and We've had a ton of people already do this and they said he is incredibly kind and he is so good at what he does. So we're really incredibly thankful for that. Look at that, he's offering options all over the valley. I mean, it just is really incredible. So we, I just love it when people step up and they're providing uh, things, especially during a tough time that people need. So there you go, all the different opportunities there. All right, if you are at our event today, then you somehow registered to get here. You are now on our email list that will, every Monday morning, we send out an email and it talks about the upcoming events for that week, or it talks, gives you some additional job search information. And so that is, um, if you don't, aren't registered and you got in another way, then you can always subscribe here right on our website. So we have three areas on our website that are providing content right now. We have career chats with me, and this is just basically a three to five minute chat video that talks about different job search, uh, different job, uh, job search information and resources. And so you can go back and look at all the content from there, you, anything you might be interested in. We have a community update and we just did a panel that is posted there around the rental assistance program, forbearance, the housing market. And so that's a resource where we brought in some experts that, to talk about that and if you're in any kind of situation with your mortgage or rent right now, we address a lot of that in that talk. So um, I encourage you to take a peek at that, but there's a ton of other resources and interviews in there as well. And then the CC webinars tab is where this webinar will be posted later today. So you can go back, reference, review, listen again to anything Travis said, as well as review any of the other talks we've had since April, since COVID hit. All right, so I wanna thank you so much to some of our volunteers that are uh, on here today. Uh, Zoom support, Tina and Gian, and then Susan is the one blogging away and getting our re event recap done. And then we've also had this army and team of coaches and resume writers that have been helping people in the back. And so we are offering that opportunity again uh, Sheila will set, mentioned it at the beginning of the call. If you're on today, you'll get an invitation to be part of that coaching program, that coaching call. And so that is our new version of um, what we typically do on site is put people in, uh, allow people to talk one-on-one -on -one with different resume writers, LinkedIn coaches and career coaches. We don't have that opportunity right now. So we're moving that into a virtual format and we're working through some of the issues, but we think we're almost there. So you're going to get an invitation to be part of that program if you have some additional uh, support that you need on LinkedIn or on your resume uh, and additional things. So thank you so much to our volunteers. And lastly, we are a nonprofit organization. And so um, we greatly appreciate all of you that have given any donation in the last couple of weeks. We don't usually talk about this, but we have in the last month because funding has hit us hard just like it has hit so many of you. And so it cost us $42 to run this program, $42 per person. And so if you are feeling so inclined or when you land your next job, if you could think of us and provide the $42 uh, to support the, or to give back, we would greatly appreciate that. It helps with our funding to be able to continue doing this program. Thank you so much for being here. We love being here with all of you. Thank you for talking in the chat and we are praying for you all that you will land into the career of your dreams. Have a great week, you guys. Bye.